So I wanted to start this video off by talking about what we have here. This is a cylinder square. It's about 11.6 inches tall. It's as square as I can make it to the surface plate. In this video, what you're going to see is a lot of grinding. I'm going to go through a lot of that very quickly. And then some of the inspection. There's a lot of footage to cover, so I'm condensing it down the best that I can. Randy Richard helped me out a lot. He's from Randy Richard in the shop. If you get a chance, definitely check out his channel. What, a, what the setup we're looking at right now is I have the cylinder square up against the bottom of my mill column and I'm going to use this to make sure that I am square so when I scrape the mill column that it is as square as I can make it to itself. The base is another story. Another thing that's going to be coming up after this video is going to be the making of the standoffs for doing the inverted inspection. These are old engine valves that I have been grinding and that'll be a full video on how I'm going about doing that. Enjoy this video. Thanks for watching. All right, so I rough mounted and lined the automatic indexing head. I have my center in it already and my drive dog. I have not bolted it down, but it is, it has been aligned with the, the keys that attach the table. And then I will also align the table square back with itself, but about as good as I can get it. So we're a little under zero here. The needle's gonna bounce a little bit as I traverse across. So almost to the center pivot area, we came up three, three tenths. All right, so I got both of the uh, both of the bolts in, and the spin indexer is locked in place. We have the diamond dresser in place, ready to dress this wheel. All right. We get the part up here next. All right, so the part is in the machine now. And what we're going to do is we're going to repair from 992 to 997. We have that five tenths worth of taper that we're going to take out. So we're going to start by indicating the front of the part and we're going to indicate the top. I want to make sure that whatever I get on the top mimics what I get on the front at least in terms of the existing status of the piece, that my centers are not too high, too low to each other, and that the taper of the piece matches the taper of the machine. And then I'll make some fine adjustments, and then we'll make a cut. We get an indicator up here, and we'll start doing that. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this. I have the indicator a little below zero. Let me bring that up. Just about to on zero. On the side of the part, if I traverse across, it should drop off no more than five tenths. That's not too bad. It does drop off. Let's rotate the part here. That's interesting. So this is one of the problems that I ran into before with this. I know my center is relatively true, and I may pull the part off and take a look at the center again, but there's a, there's a little bit of a problem. Uh, let's, let's start this spinning. See how the parts jumping around? That's one of the things that I ran into before. So I'm going to try to attempt to fix that. I'll bring you back once I've got that taken care of. So we come back to the part checked up. I've made a brand new center. It's within 5 tenths. I have not ground it. I don't want to change my setup. What I do have though is this part to the center is extremely out of round. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a grind. I'm not concerned about the size of this. I can continue to go down through it for a while. But what um, what I'm concerned about is that if I grind it again now that I have reset the machine back up, relubricated the bearings, put the spindle back in together, got really good results on the spindle, is, am I going to be able to take the part out and put it back in and see that huge drift? It's, um, it's like nine thousandths. Worth of, worth of drift on this side. This side always comes back out relatively true. So we'll give that a shot and see what happens.
the thing. Over right here, the contact pattern is different. That actually comes out. It's not the first time I found it. It's just the settings that would be useful for how pretty these bolts are. That is pushed apart from me in this direction. So we know where the pattern is going around. And then back over this way. We're going to continue to find right here. I think that's not really right. There we go. Two and a half thousand. That's why I've been working on this thing while you've got a lot of chatter. I have to take three a lot of passes. I'm not doing that now. So what we're going to do is start moving that top area. That area is going to start to decrease. That's going to cause the part to be important. I'm not going to force decrease my travel speed as the wheel is not going to cut the whole time. Let me have one of these. Take three thousands. Take 180 degrees between all the time. We're having a little bit one. See how it's got to move from here, over here, so from here to here. It's a loop from here, over here. And each time you move in, that's actually going to continue to move towards the river. Good job. It's not pronounced. So right now, our cut piece, what we'll Cool. 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 So belt doesn't move here, back up here. So we got a hard degree to come up, so they should go up. Let me think. So we're at 58 quarters on the dial. I was thinking 60 probably didn't much. I think that's 180. We don't like working out that at this point, take a minute. 59. Well, let's get me tough. We need one more. Just work out, I'm going to take a little bit more detail than I want. Okay. Let me get this worked out. Okay, after taking some measurements, I am at, let's just call these numbers, but 243 on the left side, 27. And then 15.4, so 24.3, 20.7, and 15.4, so there's quite a bit of taper here. I'll run the calculations and start making the adjustment of the table. So I need to move it 4.45 thousandths this side further away. I have the indicator sitting at zero. I'm going to loosen up the front lock on the center of the table. The rear lock. I can get the wrench in there. Can we drop down two tenths? I'm going to bring this in a little more. Let's go to five, four and a half. I need to go to zero. Bring it away. Locking those pieces down. Bring off the table. Bring off the front. And then I'm going to go ahead and pull the table back again. Remove my indicator.
and we'll get set up to make another few passes. I'll bring you back when those passes are done. Okay, I just ended up going through the whole grind. There's some, there's a little bit of a pattern in the part that I probably won't be able to take out with this machine. And I've got about one tenth taper across the 10.6 inches here that we're looking at. Now the way that I aligned it is I ended up with, um, let's say I had a diameter of plus one thousandth on this end and zero on the other end. I put an indicator along it and traversed the part, would go across the part on the back side, and I would take out that taper so that the, the longitudinal movement was exactly half of what I read from point to point. And I slowly brought that in and then did a nice spark out pass, slowed the rotation speed of this down to the slowest speed I have, and finished ground it. Now what I'm going to do is work on doing the edges or the faces of the part. So I'm going to uh, relieve some of the back of the wheel, leave a space in the front, bring the wheel into the part, and then plunge into the side of the wheel. Hopefully that gets me the desired results and I end up with a good perpendicular face. Okay, I've got the wheel dressed, ready to go. I've got things set. I'm going to be coming in and kissing this face as a, as a plunge. Let it grind and spark out. And come off. So I have only cut on one portion of the wheel as my lines are running this way. I think to fix that you have to shim up or down. I'll leave that. All right, I'm gonna try and check the OD of the part. Let's get the plate as clean as I can. It's a little bit of grit. Let's get it off of the. So if the OD is true, and I get okay with the face grind. Plane is not perfect yet, or ideal. Let's see if I can get this set up. I'm gonna get my wrong hand here doing this. I'll pass you in just a little bit. I should probably reload my plate at this point in time. Okay, zero in the middle. Half of that, half of a tenth, and then on the end, zero. Wow. Okay, let's try this again. Zero. How do I go here? Okay, half a tenth. So my total taper is half a tenth at that plane, I'll rotate it to a new plane. Here we are at minus half a tenth in the middle, minus one tenth over here, minus one tenth. So I'm going to have some deviation on my plane. Let's stand it up and we'll do this with the tailstock side. We'll do that and I had better, I had a nice finish with that the last time. So I'll stand it up on the tailstock side again and see how that comes through. After I turn the socket around a little bit. Come away. Come back in there. Okay. So, 180 degrees of that zero. Oh, I know it's one of the tangents.
I think I need a better socket. How about this? I might get some glue on the port this time. Okay. It's like something loose. Is he wrong? Is he wrong? This is point five. One point five. One. So from zero to one, that's one tenth total perpendicularity out. That's zero. So across that plane right there, this guy is perpendicular. That's interesting. Minus 0.5. Which gives that a total of one tenth. And there's our maximum out of perpendicularity at one and a half tenths at that spot. And then our initial zero. If it goes to zero, we have done well. It goes to zero. 